That said, and without further ado, we're going to have the guests introduce themselves. So please tell us your name, age, location, and occupation. Go ahead. Uh, Jasmine, 26, Thousand Oaks, California, and I'm a stay-at-home girlfriend. Okay. And X what, though? Oh, yeah. Um, I used to be a stripper and scammer. Stripper and scammer. Yeah. Okay. What, so what is a, what's a scammer? Well, I just feel like when, because uh, stripping is like part of sex work, mm-hmm. and so when you're like scamming people, you're just telling them, you know, you're going to get something that you're not going to get. But because so like, I wouldn't bring down my like self morals. I mean, obviously I didn't have the best morals at that time, but I wouldn't bring down my morals lower to um, get money. I would just rather lie to them. So what would you lie about? Um, I honestly wouldn't ever say anything because when you work in a strip club, you can't say you're going to do explicit things. I would just kind of either like agree with whatever they were asking or just, you know, like, yeah, we're going to have fun. Like, you know, I wouldn't. um, So what's the scam, though? They, yeah, they would think they were going to have sex or like sexual interactions with me that just weren't going to happen. So because that's like why most men go to strip clubs. So they would. Yeah, so there's, um, this is often the case, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, many strippers engage in backroom prostitution. Is that correct? A thousand percent correct, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a thousand percent correct. And there is coded language which is used between the club goers and the strippers. And I'm sure that you knew what that coded language was, right? And so when they would use the coded language, you would take them back, and then that's when you would just not deliver. Pretty much. Um, they're honestly, a lot of like regular customers don't have a code of language. They just blatantly say, like, I want this. Like, mm-hmm. are you going to perform this, you know? Um, my managers knew that I would lie because they, they didn't care. I would make a lot of money um, for the club and for myself. So sometimes if they didn't like customers, you know, they've given them hard times, they'd send them my way and let me scam them. <laughs> And so, but I imagine, so the customers would give you money with expectation of X. So they'd pay the club, like whatever the dance was to get like the private room. And then when we'd go in, I'd ask for my tip first. And then I would figure out how to entertain them for 15 minutes without doing what they want or anything really. But would they ever overtly request? Oh yeah. Yeah, they try. And you would agree? No. Oh. I wouldn't agree. I wouldn't do anything. So, but what's the scam then? That I'm getting their money for not doing anything they want. They are getting scammed into believing that they're going to get something met. Some, they're paying for something. But so not they getting. say, I want to, I want a BJ. Yeah. And I'm just like, we're going to go back there and have fun. And it wouldn't happen. Is so when you went, when you took them into the back room and they were under the impression that they were going to, let's say in this case, get a blowjob, let's say. Did they pay you up front for what they thought would be the sexual favor? Yeah, pretty much they would give me my tip. And then I would just, like, not do anything. And how much would you charge them for these uh, favors they thought they were going to get? I honestly didn't charge. I would just, like, if it looked like someone that was going to be difficult, I'd ask for, like, more um, they usually had like something that they'd offer like 200, like some girls are in there doing stuff for like $50. So you have to like really be, and it's usually those customers that would be aggressive. Like I've had customers push me into walls. Um, cause uh, again, like they do get mad. They go to like the manager and complain and, and at the end of the day, there's really nothing that they can do if, you know, I just told my story like I didn't agree to anything I just said we're gonna have fun but I mean you seem to acknowledge yourself that there's a scam component here yeah but I wasn't gonna scam myself out of my own morals and like dignity of giving a stranger a blowjob or sexual favors so okay um were there was there aside from like what you were doing in the strip club was there any other sort of scamming stuff yeah i had a fake fiance for like two years i met him at the strip club what do you how did that play out um i worked at like a bigger club in la which is like a it's a um like topless bar so they have they serve alcohol and they have like cell sections and stuff 
I met him there and he invited me to a Dodger game. So I said, sure. And then we went on another date. And then from there on, he just, um, he knew he wasn't going to get sex out of me because I was at the time abstinent. And so he just started spending a bunch of money thinking that he was going to get eventually sex out of me. And then he proposed to me on the <laughs> third. Bigotted Ben donated $69. Q4 panel, what does dismantling whiteness mean to you and how important is it? Well, I mean... <laughs> hey, we're, we're still in introductions. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get back to this one, Bigoted Ben. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to save it for later. Um, so, wait, the fake fiancé, so is he just, like, giving you money and stuff? Yeah, he was paying my rent. Um, I would... We would go out all the time, go shopping, go... Yeah, pretty much like anything I asked for money-wise, I would make sure that like he gave it to me. Or sometimes even like I would send it to myself from his phone, and he had no real problem with that. Okay. And so how much a month do you think he was spending on you? Um, willingly, he was paying like $5,000 of my bills when I would just pay myself at that time. I was probably making like 15 ish like 12 to 15 from doing that from scamming in total like other dudes too or? no just him like just from him i would probably send myself like around ten thousand, like a month wait you said willingly willingly he was sending me my rent my bills what were was paid. he sending you unwillingly like we would go out and i would send myself money from his phone and at the end of the day he wouldn't care he'd be like okay like just make sure you spend it on something you like need to pay for but he knew that you were doing this uh most of the time he was like drunk so you'd open up his phone go into your venmo cash app apple pay and you would just send yourself yeah okay. it was, uh, yeah i was at a really low place in this time in life did you you were in a low place um yeah and wait so how old was this guy 52 okay how old are you uh i was i met him when i was 23 okay so i do you Stopped talking to him probably like last a little bit earlier this year. And you, but you've now become a Christian. Um, or? I've been a Christian for a while. I was just like super lukewarm, mm -hmm. um, because I was like dancing and trying to survive. So, um, my means of like taking money from him was like I don't have to be at the strip club and deal with all of that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, but now you're a bit more serious about your faith or? Well, I got baptized last year and it's not more about being serious. I think it's just the fact that not everyone is going to come to God. Like it's not easy to just leave that lifestyle behind. Cause I started dancing when I was 20. So it's like, you have to realize like, that's like a long time of being involved in that lifestyle and getting used to it. The fast money is like something really hard to let go of. And wait, so but now, do you regret some of the past, the scamming? Um, I feel bad for what I did to him, particularly, because I probably took over, like, $250,000 from him in the time that I was with him. Like, he paid for me to get um, plastic surgery, like, my breast done, liposuction, and I wish I never got those procedures. Um, he also got me a car in his name like yeah i i regret what i did to him personally but at the same time like i was in a place where i was being very selfish and i, I don't regret it because i i've learned that like a lot of those trials like i feel like god was bringing me through to be where i am now to understand girls that were in my position or currently in god it. just to be clear god was bringing you through the liposuction and fake breasts and the... That was a me thing. That wasn't God that... Oh, God didn't okay. tell me to do that. It was more of like a me thing because I was insecure. And so any of this money that you accrued from him, have you returned it's gone. anything? It's gone. Fast what? money is leaves you faster than it comes. Right, but I mean... you you Look, you say some of the money he willingly gave you. No, Perhaps, he didn't get anything back. Huh? He didn't get anything. Right, but perhaps that might not necessarily be so subject to return, but, I mean, the money that you essentially stole from him, where you said you'd go into his phone, Apple Pay, whatever, um, you spent that money, but you did take it from him. So, for example, if you were to 
come into money of your own, mm -hmm. would you consider giving him back some money? Um, when we like ended whatever the relationship was, I like he still was trying to give me money to like stick around. Mm -hmm. God donated sixty nine dollars. Whoa! Don't blame me for this. Okay. Do you have a response to God? Um. <laughs> what do you mean? That guy. Don't blame me for this. No, that's not God. <laughs> okay. Um, you said towards the end of the, your relationship, mm -hmm. he was still trying to give you money? Yeah. Okay. Well, putting that aside, even granting you that the money that he was willingly trying to give you was fine, you did admit to taking money from him unwillingly. Yeah, and he uh, knows that. Huh? He knows that. Like, he, he mm -hmm. realized everything, like, towards the end, and he was still like, I want you to be in my life. I want to get money. So... Metro Mac donated $69. What liposuction? It appears you don't just lie about your body count. I didn't even talk about my body count. Okay, thank you, Matt. Um, well, so perhaps he has forgiven you or accepted that you stole the money, but don't you feel some duty to just pay him back regardless? Honestly, the last conversation we had, um, I felt as if, like, because he was like, you should just stay with me and I'll give you like the life you deserve, the life you want. I very much felt like that was granted uh, the enemy or like the devil, whatever you guys want to call it, trying to drag me back into that lifestyle because that was like the last thing I was holding on to from just being in that like area of life. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. hang on, back up. What? So, so let me get this right. You knew that you were never going to actually be with this person. You knew that you were uh, in a fake, affianced relationship with him. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. And so you stole $250,000 from him. What Brian is looking for is he's looking to see if you hold any accountability for that. How much of that is your fault? Isn't it 100% your fault? Wasn't he a victim of you? In total, um, that's how much I got out of him. That's not how much I took from him. And so that's yes, like but, also... Yes, but hang on, hang on. If the entirety of the relationship from a person who you were falsely engaged to was done under false pretenses, then everything in which he spent and that you took under false pretenses would be theft. I think we can also... It's a fair point. Yeah, it is. It's a very fair point. Um, but I also think like if we look at it from another standpoint... When I was in that time of life, I was also looking at it as he's willingly spending all this money in the hopes of having sex with me because that was the end goal to get well, married. Yeah, to have you sex. told him that you wanted to be his wife. I didn't of tell him that. He, had, he proposed well, to me. Did you say yes? Throw me a Hold donated on. $69. The IRS should have forensic accountants assigned to the watching of these uh, podcasts. Thank you, Hashtag Metro Matt, for the gifted five. Yo, JJ, appreciate it, man. Uh, uh, did you say yes? Did you accept the ring? Um, no, the ring was given to me like out of him. He had talked to somebody in like uh, uh, Columbia, and I like saw it in his phone, and I like fate got mad and so he was like here's a ring like i want you to marry me because he had asked me drunkenly at a restaurant and i was like sure you just spent like four thousand dollars taking me shopping yeah if you want to marry me okay i didn't want to make cause a scene but so you proposed to him yeah and you said yes yeah so then okay, yeah. so okay so so then listen <laughs> if you say this guy though he just was spending money on me because he wanted to have sex with me he proposed to you and you said yes if that is the case, isn't his expectation that everything he's spending on you or that you're spending on yourself is from what is to be his future bride? Why shouldn't he have the expectation of sex? That's, isn't that you being hyper predatory? Yeah, I was. Yeah, so this is how could this not be 100% your fault? Because he was a willing participant. Like, there was a lot of times we'd break up. I'd tell him, like, straight up, like, I don't want to marry you. I, You met me at a strip club. Like, add this up in your head. Like, this is not real. And he would very, like, much just act completely used to it. Thank you, JJ. Giovanni JD donated $69. You say you're Christian. Then you are commanded by Christ to perform restitution. Return all your sinfully gained money or be anathema. You won't. Heretic Jezebel. 
Do you want to respond to Giovanni here? Um, I, you know, when someone's willingly still trying to participate in something that you've told them what it is and they know exactly what it is and they're still offering you money at that point, they're being a willing participant into it. Like, at that point, what do you, what do, you do? Uh, well, so let me, give a, let me give a slight response here because I think that this is kind of silly. Let us assume for a second that I um, <clears throat> were in, in some way taking advantage of a woman where this woman had a lot of cash, okay, and I was uh, telling her consistently that I wanted to be with her. I even, had even told her that I would marry her, and I was taking advantage of her over the span of multiple years. If that woman became highly attached to me, of course she would become highly attached to me, right? I had essentially been playing into this delusion for the point of, of monetary gain. That's what I had been doing, right? Mm -hmm. So the attachment would not ordinarily be there if I had said no, but instead I had played into it for the purposes of basically monetary gain. That is not the same as a person willingly participating. That is a person being strung along and a person being essentially lied to. Well, there was, like I said, many instances where I told him what it was, and he even like kind of figured it out a lot of the times like what it was. He just played dumb to it to continue like the relationship, whatever it was. He, at some point... Well, yeah, he had formed an attachment, right? So he had formed an attachment with you because you had told him that you wanted to marry him, right? So he formed this attachment with you, and he was doing everything he could to reconcile a relationship with his fiance. Like, of course, of course that's what he would do. Like, there wouldn't, doesn't that make sense? I mean, I, yeah, I guess I, I totally understand where you're coming from and it's not wrong what you're saying, but I mean, at the end well, of the then day. Well, I still, then I don't understand how you're not, you, you're a hundred percent responsible for this situation. You made it yourself. Yeah, I was, I totally you, played a part in it. I mean, I played a huge role in, in that I lied about a lot of stuff to him, but at the same time, it's like the times that I did come clean to him and I was like, look, I don't want to do this anymore. He had... You know, and I told him straight up what it was. I'm like, I don't want. Yeah, but you're with still you. you're still using this caveat where, after I had started to come clean to him about the fact that these were mostly lies that I had told him this type of thing. At that point, the man had an attachment. He had an attachment which had formed around you, based around your lies. And so, of course, he had this attachment. Never would have existed though, absent your lies. He's still being victimized, even even if he's trying to reconcile the relationship. He's still being victimized by even trying to reconcile it because he has an attachment which would not be there if not for your lies. Well, I he, you know, had multiple other women that he was, like, giving money to. So I don't see it completely as, like, I was – he has a problem. He ha deals with, like, Well, you know, it's really weird that suddenly he has over multiple women in other – Okay, well, suddenly it's really weird. You didn't mention anything about other women that he was sending money to. I did. I said now. he was talking to someone in Colombia that I found out about. Okay. Well, the, the thing is, is I, I think that if if you string a person along and you they become attached to you based around a set of lies, that even if they want to stay with you after they, they figure out that these are lies, in many ways they're still being victimized. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. So I, I just, I don't see how the accountability here really just isn't on your shoulders, to be honest with you. Um, I think that, are you a Christian? Do you believe I am, God? yeah. Yeah. Well, I think what that, What denomination you know, are you, by the way? Are you non-denominational? Well, I honestly don't know what, like, denominations are. I just know yeah, I have a really good relationship with yeah. them. Did you, did you get Epstein baptized? donated $69. Stop justifying your lies. <laughs> you took advantage of the man. You owe him the dollar back, and the IRS should def look into this. Did you did you get baptized um, at the Saint Baptist by chance? No, I got no. No, I don't know what uh, denomination my church is. I just know it's like a Christian church. What's it called? Well, well yeah, okay. Don't, don't tell wanna, me what it's yeah, called. I, I guess never mind. I don't want you to dox yourself. I'm just sometimes just by the name of the church, I can figure out the denominations. Why I ask. 
So uh, in, in any case, re, I guess regardless of your denomination, yes, I'm a Christian. I'm not exactly sure what, so then, uh, where you're going with so that. So my question was like, so you know that obviously this world is not made perfectly in God's image. And you know that we are tempted daily and we, even the best Christians, we all sin, even if it's not like a, as bad a sin as I was living in, but we all do. I'm sure you've sinned like at least three times this past week and it's not something that you feel that you I sinned to... three times today. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So well, what's, but I don't understand what the point is. Here. Okay. Let me get to the point, please. Okay. So my thing is, is that yes, what I was doing was wrong and I was not fully, I had not fully came to Christ and tried to live my life by him yet. Um, I was still very much living for the world. I was still very much living by this like societal image of like, I didn't like being called a city girl, but obviously that lifestyle of like, take it, spend it. I want to look like, live this li like luxury lifestyle that it's all over social media. Like I was 23, 24 at the time. And I was trying to just, you know, live my best life. I wasn't living with Christ. Yes. But do you, do you understand that the point of Christianity is the salvation of Jesus Christ due to his sacrifice for your sins? Yeah. And that it's through Jesus Christ from which you are saved. Your sins can be washed away, but the material stain that you leave behind on the world, you're still responsible for the things that you have done. Christianity is not a, a form of, of uh, salvation, which then states that all wrongs that you've done now are also washed away. And I'm not In saying... this material world, the non-metaphysical world, right? You have wronged this person horribly, and that's why the, the chat is asking how you plan to compensate for that. Just saying that you have been saved, right, is I, I don't understand how that somehow alleviates the burden of responsibility that you have. Well, yeah, I mean, we're also talking about like a two long, a two year long relationship I had with this man. Like I totaled a car due to him. So that was like $50,000 of my own money. Like it was my car that I bought before I met him. Gone. Um, Wait, how's that his fault? He was drunk driving my car. Oh, he was driving the car. Yeah. I thought you said you totaled it. Well, I took fault for it because I was I just wasn't going to make him get a DUI. So you got the DUI? No, I didn't get a DUI. But he, I I wasn't drunk. If do you like yeah. So there's a lot of things um just okay. yeah. Insurance didn't take care of it. He hit parked cars. Okay. So yeah, no. Car gone. Um, also got a car in his name and it like he repoed it because he ended up not wanting to pay for it anymore. Like there's a lot of things that I know that I got my karma, if you want to say, or just like the world gave me what I was owed in that relationship. Like I don't sit here and think well, that karma, I'm like completely... Karma is a non-Christian value, just so you know. I know. I'm just saying for like people that see it as that way. Eula sees the pagan donated $200. Thank if you. this was gender reversed, the male would be vilified. Funny when it's the woman that does the victimization, it's still the man's fault for being a sap. Hey, pagan men, really appreciate it. Um, let's, we're going to have to get the other people's intros, but we can perhaps come back to this in a little bit. But um, were there, I mean, I'm assuming there were like other people that you scammed too. Like it wasn't just one guy, it was probably, how many people do you think you scammed? Um... Honestly, just him. I had a sugar. Come on. No, I had a sugar daddy wow. when I was twenty, but he just took me shopping, and he was like more of a f rich friend. He didn't expect anything out of the like friendship. But then there were the guys at the club. Yeah, you were scamming them. Yeah, okay. but they. I feel like you know, if you're a man going into a club trying to have sex with the woman, and you're willing to pay for it, like at the time, I just felt like that's kind of what they deserved. Do you think prostitution should be legalized? No. Why? Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you have your own objections to, to it, but I mean, whether they deserve it or not, I mean, so there's the, there's a civil and criminal component of fraud. So if you essentially agree, I'll do X for But that's X the thing is I never said I agreed. I said, we're going to have fun. You'll have a great time. That's the thing is like, it's. Right, but even you seem to acknowledge that this is a scam. Yeah. Like you said, you said it's a scam. Yeah. So there's some component of you knowing that that's their expectation and you're kind of like... Have you ever been to a strip club? 
Uh, I went once when I was 18, 19, something like that. Okay, yeah. so just picture, like, the worst men that are going... First of all, I, I assume you wouldn't have sex with the random girl that you met at a strip club. No, in fact, I didn't even spend any money, so you would have fucking hated me. I just went. <laughs> no, just, I My actually, friends dragged me. I They're loved, like, Brian, come. I was like, eh. Okay, I loved I'll when people once. would just, like, have conversations I'll do, with I'll us. I'll go once. Because it's like... It was I, terrible. No offense. No, I hate Terrible. strip clubs. Like, Terrible. I can't even go, like... They almost kicked me out because I didn't spend any money. Yeah, they're like that. Um, okay. No, but I just... I don't feel like they really deserve to get... Like, it's... I just feel like what they were going in was to do something wrong and dirty. And if somebody, obviously um, the girls that... If somebody, if somebody breaks into your house and they steal your illegal drugs, you're still the victim of a crime. You realize that? <laughs> okay. But that's Do you like, know why that would be? It's because the interaction between the dealer and the person who bought the drugs was uh, done uh, via consent. So the person who got the drugs consented to it, then the person who sold the drugs consented to it. Though it's a crime, it's not a crime of consent. If you had those then illicit drugs at your home and a person broke in and stole them, you could report those drugs stolen and they would still go to jail for a crime and they should go to jail for a crime. So just saying that these people were perhaps morally reprehensible does not mean that you have license to then scam them. And it would still be criminal. You can't defraud people just because uh, you think that they're scumbags, right? Again, I was in a very different place in my life at this time. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways, well, we can come back to it if need be. Um, guys, the TTS has been boosted. TTS is now up to 200. Uh, ben, we'll read your... $69 one that came through earlier uh, once we get through all the intros. So TTS is now 200, just FYI. Uh, name, age, location, occupation? Hi. <laughs> my name, yes, my name is Asia. I am 52 years old. I live in Los Angeles, and I am one of the hosts of the Glow Up Girls podcast, and I'm also in the beauty industry. That's my day job. All right. Uh, did you go to university or college or anything like that? In Texas, yes. University what of did Texas. You, what did you study? Communications. Bachelor's, master's? Bachelor's. Okay. And you've, uh, before getting into the beauty industry, were you doing other kind of work? or? I was an actress. Okay. And what, what do you do in the beauty industry? I am a regional trainer for a, a big corporation. Like hair, makeup, um, all skin, skin. All yeah, it all. Is, okay, the last cool. ten years, I've been dealing with everything in the skin industry or skincare. Oh wait, there's a. What was the one, the '69 that just came through? I feel like I ought to read it just for. All right, hold on, dude. It came through right at the end there. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself? Go ahead. Hello, um, my name is Serena. I'm 21 years old from Monterey Park, and I am a manager at Top Golf. All right. Do you do content at all or? No, no content at all. Okay. No. All right. What about you? Hi, I'm Christy. I live in Chino Hills, California. I'm a licensed esthetician, and I specialize in sugaring hair removal. I'm also on the podcast with Asia doing the Globe mm -hmm. Girls. And uh, age? 53. All right. Welcome. Uh, you, any university school? I went to Pasadena City College, got my associates there, and then went to the trade school to learn esthetician. Mm -hmm. Are you in school at all? I am in school, yes. Uh, what are you studying? Um, right now I'm studying business administration. Okay. What about you? Hi, I'm Lexi. I'm 18. I live in Santa Barbara, and I'm a student right now. At the City College? Or yeah, City what College. Are you, what are you studying? Justice Studies. Justice Studies. What's that? I'm not really sure, but I want to be a lawyer, and I feel like it's good background for when I transfer. Got it. And uh, you're, are you from Santa Barbara originally? I grew up in Carpinteria, then I in moved Car to Calabasas. Okay, got it. So it's, you're going into your first year? Yes. At, okay. So you haven't taken any classes yet? So you no. Know, justice, is that like social justice or is that um, like Yeah, it's like social and criminal. criminal. I'm oh, studying okay. criminal uh, first semester. Okay, yeah. I see. All right. What about you? Uh, my name's Claudia, but my friends call me Cece. I am Cece. 20. Um, I'm going to be 21 soon, though, like in like 12 days. And then um, I'm a pharmacy specialist, tech. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, I'm Morgan. I'm 18. I go to the City College studying political science. All right. I'm Maddie. 
<laughs> I'm 19. I work on the podcast. I'm also a student at City College. Okay. And then, uh, Andrew, what about you? My name is Andrew Wilson. I'm the host of The Crucible. It is, to my knowledge, the fastest growing debate channel on the internet. Um, well, at least on YouTube. I'm a political analyst, a political satirist, and I occasionally enjoy engaging in debates from time to time. All right, welcome everybody. I will read the, the 69 one that came through kind of right there on the cusp. It was from Peacecraft. Peacecraft says, I really want to know what these women think, but before we do, I'd really like to ask them how they would feel if they didn't have breakfast this morning. Quick answer from all. So how would you feel if you didn't have breakfast this morning? I'd be exhausted right now. I would be hangry. I didn't have breakfast, but I feel great. Okay. okay. I would be totally grumpy. Probably really hungry. I would be like mad because I like pizza. <laughs> um, I would be hungry. Tired, hangry. All right. Thank you, Peacecraft. Appreciate it. I'm glad I was able to catch that there. Uh, <laughs> we're going to go around the table once more, and then we'll get to Ben's question. Um, what's your current relationship status? So are you single, talking stage, situationship, friends with benefits, relationship, married, polycule, sex, cult, harem, whatever it may be. <laughs> if you're single, how long have you been single? And what's the longest relationship you've ever been in? Go ahead. Uh, I'm in a relationship currently. We've mm -hmm. been together for a little over a year. I'm planning to get um, married next month. And my longest relationship was like seven years. Seven years. Okay. And you're 26, right? Yeah. Uh, and you've been in a new relationship for one year, you said? Yeah, a little over one year. From what age to what age was your seven-year relationship? Uh, it was like on and off the last three years, uh, 15 to 22. And it was on and off again? For like the last two years. How many times was it? Uh, we would take like six months breaks. How many times total? Was it off and on? Two times. Two times? So like a year off, Who yeah. would end things? Who would end things? Sorry, what? You said it was an on again, off again. Oh, yeah. We would just break up because we have a daughter. So it, we oh, broke up. Okay. Yeah, I have a child. So we broke up for like six months and then we got back together for a year and then uh, we broke up again and that was it. Okay. Uh, and you had a child how long into the relationship? Um, actually, when we broke up when I was like 16, I got pregnant. So two years into the relationship or something like that. Oh, you got pregnant at uh, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Does he pay child support? Yeah. Okay. Just curious how much. Not anything. Oh, he, he doesn't. That's why I danced, because he barely pays anything. I just got it raised to like $70. It used to be $37 a month. Okay, all right. And um, that's your only kid? Yeah. Okay. Do you want more kids? Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But uh, but but hang on, just to just to ask, um, with such a low number, does he have joint physical and legal custody then? Uh, yeah, unfortunately. He yeah, so he gets be. so hang on, so he gets the kid every other week or weekend or something like that. Yeah, some it's like a weird joint. Um, it's like a weird yeah. split. It's like a five two five. Yeah, so I mean, why should he pay child support? That's <laughs> right. Like, why why should he? Uh, I pay for insurance. I pay for all her dental care that comes out of pocket. I pay for all of her school clothing, her school. Like, I pay for everything. He he, literally, at this point, is living in a one-bedroom with my daughter and but, his girlfriend. But does he have does he have uh, half, half the custody, though? Yeah, and I... Does I feel, he have her half the time, is my question. Uh, currently, yeah, but he can't... Yeah, so, I mean, if he has her half, half the time, why... Why would he need to pay you support? Just, just you know, like that's that isn't isn't that absurd to make the request that if the father has the kid half of the time, they're already taking care of of uh, of half of the child's rearing, right? Most of, like I said, I pay for most of her clothes, most of everything, even when she's at his house. Wait, is it fifty okay. fifty custody? Yeah. But the yeah. time the timeshare is not fifty fifty. No, is? it is. It is. It's oh. fifty fifty time. But what I'm saying is like I pay for a majority of her health care, everything like that. Like it's not it shouldn't as, it, he should have less time is what I'm saying. Wait, is it uh it's and it's gone through the court system? Yeah, so it was uh yeah, like the four years ago, three years ago when we who, broke up. Who brought it to court? You were I did. You did? Yeah. And you were um because he wasn't seeing her at the time. He wasn't spending any time with her. I see. Okay. And then 
Uh, you said, unfortunately, he gets... 50%, yeah. Why is, it, why is that unfortunate? Don't you uh, want... No, I would love for him to spend time with her, but I, it's unfortunate because it's not like used productively, and he's just not, I don't feel like, taking care of her as best as he could. Mm-hmm. So, so it's a damn good thing that you that uh, women in this situation don't get to make that adjudication because um, from the perspective of many women, they're always going to think that they're the better caretaker than the man. We have no demonstration of evidence to the contrary, and there's no way for us to have any demonstration to the contrary. But if he has 50% custody, then I think that whatever argument that you have for needing child support goes out the window anyway. Well, I just feel like the court system pities a single father sometimes, um, especially well when they, they should. Hail and well met. Lol Paladins donated two hundred dollars and two cents. Yeah. Remember, you, fellas, man. fifty to fifty, and it doesn't matter how broke you are. She will keep coming after your last thirty-seven dollars a month. She is all women, and she will blame you for it in public. Yo, Lol Paladins, thank you, man. There's another one coming in right now. So I'll just preempt it. Good to see you in the chat, Law Paladins. Thank you for the TTS, man. 50-15, doesn't matter how broke. Have you ever paid him child support? Yeah, uh, they tried. To- Hillary Epstein donated $200. Thank you, Hillary. Appreciate it. U.S. court system sucks. Divorce dad, 50-50 custody, 223 schedule. $1,750 a month and truly 50-50. Are you in California? Ridiculous. Hillary, where, where are you at? California's pretty bad. Um, sorry to hear that, man. Um, you, he was, you were going to have to pay him child support? Yeah, he had requested it at one point for me to pay child support. He had like gone to welfare and asked for all this help because he just didn't want to get a job. Yeah. Because if he doesn't have a job, they can't take money from him. And was he awarded child support? No, because I had proof he was working under the table as a security guard. Well, but like... Weren't you making all this money, too? Um, this was at a time where I wasn't, like, I wasn't dancing as much or doing... I didn't... Ha- this was way before the but, I mean, you said this situation. guy gave you, like, you dated him for two years, right? Yeah, it was the, before the situation. Before the kid? No, before the, um, like, I guess, sugar daddy or whatever you want to call him, fake fiancé. The fake fiancé was... Pri- Af- that was after. After what? After we had gone to court and everything. <clears throat> oh, Okay. Like after he tried to take me to court to get him to pay to get me to pay him. But I mean, were you? Because I mean, there's assessments when it comes to child support. Were you reporting to the court this dancing money? Yeah, in the state of California, no, but the, but you get paychecks. This, the the money this guy was giving you. Oh yeah, I have. I mean, uh, okay. Apple pa- Apple Cash like reports what you make. But if you guys are fifty fifty, why aren't you paying him child support? If it, it sounds like you would have been out earning him, you said you made two hundred fifty thousand dollars over the course of two years mm-hmm. I mean that that's must... just like an estimate because that's also including like what he spent on shopping and my me getting my boobs done and all of that sure but you said you would like send, through, you'd get his phone you'd mm-hmm. send yourself like $5,000 in total out of everything because like just my breasts were like $50,000 is that the cost of titties I went to like a really well known doctor in, in Beverly Hills which Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it doesn't, it was like all together, like close to 250. Okay. All right. Well, she also said that he knew she was taking the money. Yeah. Like he, thank you. He knew. It's not like he didn't know. Like he would see like, oh, I sent you $2,000. Like, okay, what did you send that for? And I'd be like, oh, I need to pay this. He's like, okay, well, you know, I'm not going to give you money like next week or something. And then. Well, well, yeah, because you were supposed to be his future wife. So he's taking care of you. Okay, right? but if we really go based off of that, he was also talking to other women. So it's like... And I would like to add, you, do you not think a 52-year-old man knows what's happening with a 22-year-old girl? He knows what he's paying for. But oh, he wasn't really? getting you anything. Know that, wait, wait, wait. Hang on a second. Just get this right. If the burden of evidence was that this gentleman just, okay, had no. not... Hang on. If, mm-hmm. the, if the burden of evidence hey, was and well met. had not. Lol Paladins donated $200.02. Seriously, Brian, you think she reported the 250 k <laughs> no, in cash not. to the IRS? The men aren't the only people she scams. The government is a victim, too. All right. <laughs> and I Thank can see that the, the sisterhood of accountability is uh, driving right in here, right? Sisterhood can't take accountability. It's, uh, it's, it's against their nature. So... 
But to, but to dive in, can you explain to me how this man was not victimized by this woman? Can you explain that to me? I'm not saying I think this was, was no, no, not he, you. He's I'm talking to me. I think you're being really dramatic by using the word victimize because oh, he oh, does. Okay. I, I, he I, did oh, know I, she was taking the money, and he was willing. He was willing. I know, was it? Was she take uh, taking and the money there in are, pretenses? I don't know. I don't know the. I don't know him. What, what did but she just what I'm say? saying is, I'm. She, she literally said he was taking. She was taking money under false pretenses and called it a scam. I think she, she was talking. She, I think she was on, talking about her. What do you, what do you think scam so means? Wait, would it be fair if I was having sex with him? Yeah, no, I would care still. But can you can but you explain to me real quick? Fair if what, I was having okay, can, sex can you with let him? us finish our conversation? What do you think scam means? What do you think that means? Do you think that means I'm being very truthful about my intentions, or do you think it means something else? No, you're not being truthful. Yeah, you're not being truthful. So wait, would you call that false pretenses? I guess so. But what I'm saying yeah, I is I think that there are segments of men that understand that what they are paying for and that this is the situation that because they are paying for attention. How do you somehow manage... To ma manage to do the mental gymnastics necessary after she tells the entire story, explains it herself as a scam, says she took this money under false pretenses, to still somehow try to justify it as her being the victim. I'm not saying she's the victim. Well, you I did, think because what you, you were, started you were, this by saying this. You started this entire engagement by saying he knew exactly what he was doing because he's 53 years old, implying that she's actually being victimized here. I didn't exactly say that. What I said is, do you not think that he doesn't, he may not know that, or he may not understand that that's what he was paying for? But what I'm saying is, there are segments of men that do pay for attention. Yes. From younger sure women. There are, Older but, men okay. pay for attention from younger women. Do you, do you agree that they, there are segments of men who eat watermelon? Do you agree sure. with that statement? Yeah, okay, great. What the fuck does that have to do with scamming a man? What What is saying there are segments of men who do X have anything to do with the current conversation that we're having? She's talking about scamming her clients at the strip club. She did say she was scamming. She had a mm -hmm. fake fiancé. So mm -hmm. her pretense was to not marry the man. But what I'm saying is let's consider maybe he knew what he was paying for as well. That's all I'm saying. He but knew. I, okay. It's, it's really funny, though. He knew Why he is was it that this needs to be looked at in the best light from the interest of the woman instead of in the interest from the man? That's my question to you. Why should we instantly look at this as some sort of, well, he's 53. I'm sure he, I'm sure he didn't, uh, you know, he, he knew. He knew exactly what was going on. Why should we assume that? Why should we assume that a person who, then, who makes the claim that they knew it was done under false pretenses because took I am, this amount of money? What do you think his incentive was to do that? Although I, this may be anecdotal, but I am 52, and I speak to a lot of 52-plus-year-old men that do tell me that they date younger women, pay for their bills, because that's they feel like that's their rite of passage. Because after they get divorced, they want to go and feel like they're, they want their ego stroked, and they want to be with a young girl. Oh, well, let me give you some anecdotes back. Having talked now to hundreds upon hundreds of women on this podcast, let me explain that there are many women who are in their early 20s who constantly seek out older men specifically for the purposes of capturing their resources and they're in complete control. They are in total control and they often do it under false pretenses. And then when they're called out on the false pretenses for which they have done this under, the sisterhood all gets together and makes excuses for her. Why do you think that is? Why does the sisterhood all get together to make excuses for scam artist women? Can you explain that to me? I'd actually like to know the answer to that. I'm speaking for myself. Yeah, and I'm speaking I know. I'm speaking for to you about men. yourself. I know, and I'm speaking... I'm not... You know what? I am defending her a little bit because you are coming down really hard on her, and we're not taking in consideration that the man, and there are men that understand what they're paying for. Ah, but if I may That's jump in, if I may jump in here a little, little bit. So let's just grant that everything that was given willingly was uh, copacetic. Although she's, she does seem to uh, concede that 
there was, there was a component of misrepresentation mm -hmm. as to her interest in him because fake husband, whatever. Uh, but even setting all that aside, she admitted that she would go on his phone while she, while he was drunk and without his permission, without his consent, send his money like to her. In what universe are you prepared to actually defend that specific action? Well, she said he. To she told him. She. She. So if a woman she gets. She told him, hold on, and he said, woman, "Okay." Hold on. Oh my God. Fuck. Roth underscore PSA donated two hundred dollars. Hello, Brian, Andrew, and the panel. Andrew, not in studio. Safe from the lint roller. Hope the show is going good. Please don't scam people, you jackal. Defending bad behavior is bad. All right, Rath PSA. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, sorry, I was. <laughs> thank you, Rath. Um, so let me ask you a question. If a woman is being victimized in some way, I'll let your imagination run wild, but she knows that she's being victimized, does that change the degree to which she's being victimized? Wow, that's, <laughs> uh, that went over my head a little bit. Okay, so, oh, I'm gonna use a very extreme example okay. here. A woman is in the, I can't believe I'm gonna bring it here. A woman's being essayed, but she knows she's being essayed, so it's okay? Essayed? Uh, oh, 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 okay. She's being essayed. Okay, got it. Yeah. She knows she's being essayed. Does that make it okay? No. Mm. So in this situation where this man is essentially, I don't know if it's uh, wire fraud, if it's uh, what kind of th theft exactly, the legal term for what's going on, she's going on his phone without his permission. It's theft. Grand theft. This is f felony level money that's being moved around here. <laughs> Grid One Motorsports donated two hundred dollars like and one, one cent. I said that as up. a fifty-three you, year male, you disgust me. A scam is a scam is a scam, and you forking know it. The fact you charlatans defend this sort of actions is what sets women as a whole back in all men's eyes. Be better. All right, Grid One. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. So again, like he, she claims we don't know his story. She claims he was aware of this. But then, if he was aware of this, why, why would she need to secretly do this? Couldn't you just have asked for money instead of having to secretly go on his phone and just like well, send yourself Well, because he money? wasn't getting sex, like he would sometimes be more greedy, obviously. Wait, I don't see how that's relevant at all. Well, because he, I would ask for the money and he'd be like, oh, well, like, you know, you don't even want to like kiss me. You don't even want to like make out with me. So like, I don't, I don't know. Like I already sent you like this or that. And then the next day, if he, he would see the transactions, he wouldn't like ever get mad or about it or like ask me like, why did you do that? He'd be like, oh, okay, that's fine. Like, you know, if you're going to, uh, yeah, you did ask me for the money. I didn't want to give it to you. Like here, you already have it. This seems a bit dubious, but in any case, you did seem to. Again, this man this is knew a, what he was well, doing. Well, this is a post hoc justification. So he said no, and then he took it anyway. And then after you took it, he's like, well, okay. <laughs> after you, so he's like, this it's is, better to ask for forgiveness than permission. <laughs> this is like a man that was, like I said, he was spending money to like other women in other countries. He was the type of guy that flies to Colombia to just get some pussy. How does I that? Think. I don't understand. Let's say for a second he was a serial killer. That's what he did on the side, and you discovered this. How would him being a serial killer justify your actions? Okay, say I wasn't me, and I was an innocent bystanding or an innocent girl that actually wanted to be in a relationship with him, and he's going off of this pretense of like, I want to be your husband, I want to get married, and he's having sex with her, all the things, but he's still talking to these other women in Colombia. Like, if it yeah, weren't going to be, wrong. yeah, hey, that would listen, be wrong. That would be that so would be my, wrong. And was my that what was happening? My perspective of it was that okay, you're going to either do all the like the extra stuff you do with someone else. Or I can just get, like, kind of, you know, what I Here, need out of me, the situation. let me engage directly. Yes, if you were an innocent bystander and you were looking to have some kind of great, healthy relationship with this guy and you really were in love with him and you were doing everything right and he was off gallivanting all over Colombia humping prostitutes, then, yes, that would be completely and totally wrong. And that exactly was not happening in this case, was it? Yeah, but you guys clearly do not understand, like, the caliber of man he was was not one of, like, honor. 
he was Can clearly I ask a dog. A question like, what oh, the hell I see. Did this so, guy do so, for so, so just make, make, make um, this is all, he, this is all justifying bad behavior, right? He, when does the Christian part come out? When does the Christian part come out? Instead of the justification, where does the responsibility portion come out? Oh, I've taken my responsibility of this already with him, like. No, all you do is making justifications for how horrible he was and that he deserved it. He yeah, actually deserved I'm, I'm, it. Right? I am making I'm making justifications for how I was acting at that time, but like that is not currently me, and that is not currently how I believe anyone should be behave or act or do that to like. I feel wrong for what I did. I'm not saying I don't just because I'm trying to have you understand where I was and what I was doing. Like, yeah, at that time I didn't see it as wrong. I didn't care. I didn't care about him. I cared about surviving. I was selfish. I was living for myself. I've already said that. Like, yeah, I did not give a fuck about him or how he felt. Like, I didn't. I justified so it in my head at that time. So the who, who was responsible for this? Yeah, I did take advantage of him. But at the same yeah, time... Yeah, so you were responsible. There's no at the same time. Just you were responsible. Your actions, you were responsible. Without you, none of this would have happened, right? Sure, yeah. Okay. So, going back to you, um, I'm just a little confused. He knew, but I. You're trying sure. to make it sound like I need to say that it was his fault. I'm not saying it's his fault. I'm saying let's get, consider maybe he knew what the situation was. That's all I'm saying. We see it all the time. You talk. You have all your podcast guests come on and talk about it all the time. Men, there are a lot of men out there that pay for attention from young girls or any woman, any attractive woman, or anyone that will even pay attention to them is all I'm saying. Well, yes, they do it, but there's two components here. There's the component of she's leading him on with absolutely zero intention of any, any romantic or sexual attention being received by him at any point. Um, and then there's the component of there's, again, even if granting all the willing money that he sent her is copacetic, totally fine. There's still the component of she went on his phone and was like sending herself money from his phone. But he was fine with that. But I, that's what I'm going based off of her saying, I would tell him, he said, that's fine. Well, that's what I'm like, going based off of. Like if it would be of. a real problem, he probably would have already like tried to take me to court or, you know, press charges mm -hmm. or something. Well, I have to push back on this because uh, how many women stay with abusive men? Just because the women stay with abusive men does not justify the abuse that the woman is going through. Well, she, I mean, she stayed with him, so she didn't go to court or anything or didn't go to the police, but he was smacking her around. So, I mean, she was okay with it, I get. Does that make sense? Of course it doesn't make sense. So where he's going to is um, because you're saying, oh, he was a dirtbag. He deserved it, right? The guys in the strip club are gross. They deserve it. I'm not saying the guy deserved it. I'm only saying let's open up the possibility that he understood what he was paying for and what was going on. But then why? Yeah, because it happens not, all the time. Okay, listen, I, I agree with you. Okay, so let me let me give you a little bit of um, of like uh, an olive branch here. I agree with you that there are men who exist in this world who, in that situation, would have known that that was going on. You have zero evidence that that was the case. Zero, right. none, zilch. And hang on, because you have zero evidence that that was the case, you should not leap to that assumption. What it looks like is you're deflecting on behalf of somebody else in order to protect somebody else based on zero evidence whatsoever that that is the case when all the evidence we've heard tonight is to the contrary. I feel like he is someone that is used to spending money on women to have sex and to get what he wants out of them. And the fact he knew I was abstinent at the time, um, I feel like the whole, oh, let me marry you, like proposing to me was just a gist thinking it would get us closer to intimacy. And that was on the third date because he knew that nothing was happening. I hadn't kissed him. I hadn't done nothing with him. And at this time, he was already spending $4,000 on me on the second time we hung out shopping. Like, he expected things to happen very early on that weren't happening. And I feel like, you know, I told him, like, I'm not having sex until I get married. Like, I just don't want to have sex with anyone like that because I 
started getting closer into like my faith of knowing like my worth and I just didn't want to like entangle myself with a bunch of people anymore at that point. Wait, you were just to be clear, how long ago was this relationship? Um this started when I was like about to turn twenty three. And you said you were waiting until marriage to have sex. Mm-hmm. So you've been celibate for the past four years? Um, I was celibate until earlier last year. What happened to waiting until marriage? Uh, I fell into a really dark place in my life. That needed, well, he was that going... needed to be fixed by sexual intercourse? Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, I was... I was when, I feel like a lot of men can agree when you needed your ego stroked. I needed my ego stroked. I was like not dancing anymore. He was no longer paying for anything. I was kind of like really losing myself again. And so, yeah, I had sex with someone. And Just him? That's the only guy you've one had One person. Um, sex and then with. several months later, I started dating my now boyfriend. And you've had sex with him? Uh, yeah, but we've been like on and on abstinent trying to not... When's the last time you had sex? Um, Yesterday. No, I want to say like in June. Okay. <laughs> and then uh. before that, it was like a month <laughs> without having sex. Oh, uh, so hey guys, so how long have you been abstinent? It was three years until last like January. Oh. Then you, but you just needed your ego stroke. Yeah, I was going through some difficult things. And then when were you, when were you baptized? Last year. Was this before you uh, decided to throw the abstinence out of the window? The, I was already dating my now boyfriend. Yeah, so, but it was before you threw the abstinence out the window? No, it was, it was after. So you were baptized afterwards? Yeah, I was, uh, I was yeah. baptized after I started dating my now boyfriend. Couple questions. And your you're, and, and your now boyfriend, are you you're still engaged? And is this your now boyfriend? Yeah. Well, and you're yeah. and and you're are you engaged in a sexual relationship with this person as well? I like I said, we're trying to like stay abstinent until we get married. Trying trying is a very strange. That's a strange. Trying is a very yeah, because it's it's really hard when you both lust after each other and you're trying to. Uh, like stain from having sex when you obviously have a physical craving. That's just what flesh is. You want that intimacy. Yeah, no, with I, your I person. understand all that. My my direct question to you is: Are you engaged in a sexual relationship with your current boyfriend? Yeah, but we haven't had yeah. sex in like a month. In a month. Okay. Wait. So. Or when was June? That was. Did so your current? So you said there was like a guy who you had a short fling with, and a guy you've been in a relationship with. Mm-hmm. Um, did they have to spend? Like, have they spent money on you? Well, my boyfriend made me a stay-at-home girlfriend, but that's only for the purpose of, like, we are very, um, uh, what's the word? We're very, like, I can't think of the word right now. We're just, we know what we want to do moving forward with our (laughs) Grid One Motorsports donated $200 and one cent. As the Hawk Tua girl said recently, what fills the hole often does not fill the soul. So choose wisely words to live by. From one degen to all of you degens. Okay. <laughs> I saw that interview. That was kind of funny. Um, thank you, Grid One. Really appreciate it, man. Uh, wait, and like, just curious. The, so there's the, the fling. You said it was kind of an ego thing for you, right? Yeah. Just so, like, was it a, like a one night stand? Like, you met him at the bar? How did no, it... uh, we met and we went on a couple dates, and then he went back because he wasn't from here. He went back to where he lives, which is uh, the UK, and then we were like talking for several months, and then I ended up how, going out there to see him. How soon into the like, was it the first date, second date that you guys hooked up? Or, um, I want to say the third day because he was leaving. So, me, I was just thinking, like, you're leaving, and right. yeah. Like and what about the current boyfriend? First date, second date, third date? Um, it was it was the first date, but I wasn't like again. I that was like right after each other, not right after each other. That sounds gross. Wait, it so, wasn't like so. He's back going to back, back to the UK. And it then was. How soon did you meet the the new guy? Um, like March. Wait, so, uh, so I met the new guy January. I met my boyfriend. We started no April. We started talking in April. Wait, you met the British guy? Is he British? Yeah. Yeah. You met him in January? Mm-hmm. And then 
he was leaving. So, okay, he, he when did he leave? He came here for like two weeks. He, he was here when for did two he weeks. Leave? I met him like several days before he left. When like, did he leave? January? January, yeah. And then you met your now boyfriend in April? Yes, last April, yeah. Okay, this was like last year, yeah. Well, hold on. I mean, this two-year guy, I'm waiting till marriage, da-da-da-da-da. Yeah. But the two most recent men that you've had sex with, one was... He was leaving soon, and there was absolutely no prospects of long-term relationship because he was I leaving. I thought there would be. I was, like, okay. retarded. Was there? Oh, I can't say that. It's um, okay. I was, I was, yeah, no. I was, I was, like I said, I was, like, in a low place, and I was, like, not yeah. thinking. I was just thinking for my ego. And, and But then your current boyfriend, first night. First yeah, because I was, again, like, I was not in the greatest place. I thought I was going to... Weren't you in a bad place when you were dating the... Yeah, it was the, a long period of, like, I old. was losing everything. But why does the 53-year-old get, I'm waiting till marriage, and then, like, these guys, first date, second date, third date? Um, That's where I'm confused. Well, because he's 53, I met him at a strip club, and that's kind of what the whole aspect of it was from the whole like yeah so you were you were using him yeah i've said yeah. that i don't know why you guys keep yeah, asking prospects. like it's because 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 question. it's a post hoc thing i'll tell you why we keep we we we, we kind of keep getting confused keep getting confused because the post hoc justification meaning every single time you kind of take responsibility for this and say yes i was using him and this and that you give us just a series of qualifiers for that and this, it's a series of qualifiers that are bothersome, right? Yeah, I'm responsible, but he kind of had it coming. Yeah, I'm responsible, but he knew what was going on. Yeah, I'm responsible, but yeah, I'm responsible, but yeah, I'm responsible, but that's why that's why it's confusing because the question really is in this particular case, if you're using this guy and you scam this guy and you did all these you know horrific things to this guy. We're, the, myself and the entirety of the audience is actually confused as to how this isn't just really just kind of your fault and that you're just kind of playing fast and loose with the idea of, well, I didn't want to lower my morality. It doesn't seem like it had much to do with morality. You just didn't want to screw him because he was 53, right? <laughs> like, isn't that what was going on? Well, I just saw him as like, like a trick. Like he was just some guy from the club. The guy that I had met from the UK was, I met him at a nightclub. I never go out like that. And so it was, it to me at the time felt very destiny, stupid. Like it was dumb. It was very dumb. And like I said, ego driven. And in that time of like, I was slowly starting to let go of the 53 year old. I was letting go of dancing. I had no money. It was a fat ego stroke for me to like, completely changed my life within like a matter of like three months four months it's not something and I think that's kind of like what I was trying I guess to bring to the show is that like I feel like you guys interview a lot of girls and don't realize like getting out of the fast money is not easy and it's really hard to do that gracefully and even like you're, you're saying like you know I'm not taking ownership I'm taking ownership 100% that I what I did was wrong restitution he doesn't want anything like back. How he's do you still know? trying to give me Have money. Yeah, he doesn't. He's still trying to give me money. Wait, so Andrew, I think we gotta also just address like. He knows this, I have a boyfriend. He knows that like. This guy ain't this. perfectly like. Uh, how do I how do I frame this? Like he's a sucker. He's a sucker and a simp. Like, bro, you should, as a dude, you should not be spending, I don't care if you're trying to bag like a younger girl, like a younger woman, whatever. Like, you can't be spending this kind of money on, on a chick. I'm sorry, Brian. I'm not willing to go the what about the Mendo argument. In this case, I see somebody who's clearly been victimized and has clearly been victimized of multiple crimes. And even if right sure, now this person is still pining after this woman, this was all done under a false uh, assumption of a potential for some type of long-term relationship by her own admission so even the feelings, which he could be feeling right now, uh, he may not ordinarily have had if he was not let on. So I'm, I'm just not willing to put the ball back in his court for responsibility just yet. Based oh, on I'm, not, I'm not like saying that there's no, uh, there's no blame on her, but I'm saying like you meet a stripper in a strip club, uh, or even if you meet a normal woman, you should not be spending this sort of money uh, on a woman like I would say this to any guy I would say this to any dude like you shouldn't be spending this kind of money 
So she's, I'm not saying she's like, yeah, I, I agree. I, so I agree with you in spirit, but let me kind of make uh, just a bit of a counter rebuttal here. Um, so grandma gets called by a scammer at Target, goes down to Target, spends $500 on gift cards, gives them to the scammer. You would tell grandma not to do that, right? You'd say, grandma, you're getting suckered and this and that, but who's the victim there? The grandma. The grandma. You wouldn't tell grandma that, you know, grandma it was, was um, you know, you wouldn't beat up on grandma, in other words, right? You would tell grandma, like, look, you can't be doing this. This is bad for you to do. But you're doing that so that they avoid being suckered in the future, not because they themselves are doing something which is immoral or wrong. Well, let, so let me ask you this, though, Andrew. So I'm sure you would agree that there are some scenarios where men are, they have, they have agency, yeah. and they're just willfully giving women this sort of money. Yeah, Sam, and, Sam. And so I, there's certainly 100%, like the grandma example, it's a scam. There's women who are doing, running love scams on men. But there are also men who are inclined to just give this money away to women who the women themselves, I'm not saying that's even the case for her, the women themselves are not necessarily uh, angling to scam the guy. So there are men who will just, like, the woman's not asking for it. They'll just, like, they'll be soliciting, essentially, this sort of dynamic. Um, I agree. And you're talking about the pay pick phenomenon, which we've so often kind of uh, run into on this program with these women. However, I'm not convinced in this case that that is what's going on. And I haven't, as I'm kind of piecing this together from the story, I'm not, that's not what I'm hearing here. I'm hearing that this guy is moving towards, now she says that, that she thinks that he's moving towards, um, I want to marry you so that she'll be physically intimate with him. And perhaps that's true, right? But it could also be the case that he did, just wanted a long-term relationship with her. I have no idea. There's no way for us to, to know that for sure. What we do know for sure, though, is that uh, he did not want to give her some of his money, and she would just transfer it to herself, and then later he would just say, well, fine, I guess since you did it, there's nothing I can do about it, and, you know, that's that. So I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what he's done, which is wrong here. You know what I mean? Well, it's hard to say without knowing the full details. We're only getting, I agree. We're only getting one side of it. I imagine there's some degree of, of nuance here. Um, I mean, look, the, this grandma example, I, I don't know if that maps on 100% one-to-one because typically, typically, you know, with these, uh, these older people, they'll call them up and they'll specifically target like much more elderly people, 70s, 80s, and they'll say, um, your, son, your grandson, your son's in jail, we need you to wire this money to us, blah, blah, blah. Oftentimes these elderly people are, have early onset dementia or Alzheimer's, uh, perhaps not fully developed, but very early on. A 53-year-old man, I think, would have a little more agency in this situation than, say, for example, a 73-year-old man. Um, again, I'm not excusing what she's, what she's done here, but to go into a strip club and be like, I'm going to wife up a stripper, you're fucking up. Like, you shouldn't do I, that. Look, you shouldn't I, do I that. Don't... I, I totally agree with you that that is a bad choice for you to make long, from a longevity point of view. But, Brian, you can't actually say that there's something immoral about it. It's not actually immoral. On the man's it, part? Maybe, yeah, to, to wife up a stripper. It's not no. immoral to do. It's no, just it's a bad stupid. idea. It's a bad idea. Yeah, so just like, so I think in the grandma analogy, it's the same thing, right? Grandma, it's a bad idea to let these scammers take advantage of you. You know what I mean? Grandma sure. stopped doing that. Yes. But grandma still got scammed, right? Mm. She still got scammed, and the scammers got the gift card. So it's like, I'm not sure what to beat this guy up over other than being stupid. Right? That's, that's what I'm doing. That's, all that's it. Yeah. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. He's just a, he is very stupid. That's the yeah, extent stupid. of it. I'm certainly not uh, trying to downplay. I mean, at least by the, own, the admissions that have already been made, I think there's... Um, plenty to find fault no offense uh in terms of the conduct from no uh, yeah i totally the lady take over ownership here, but, of what i did um in any case um 
I do. I, I've got to get through the relationship statuses. Maybe we'll get back to I it. Think, for a yeah, I think that's one of the first times me and Brian have had kind of a significant disagreement on the show and, and hashed it out like that. It's a. I mean, there's been other times, I guess, but well, I don't know that, if we totally disagree. No, I think ultimately we do agree. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not trying to excuse the conduct here. I'm just saying, like, buyer beware to some degree. I guess. Well, the um, the problem I have with this. Is I and I see this all the time, and it's it's blame shifting. It's the blame shifting that drives me crazy, right? It's like, as men, we understand that we can go to other men and say, "Look, you're fucking up. You're stupid. Um, you know what I mean? I'm going to give you a smack to the back of the head. You know what the what they do in the the old school, right? You're going to get cuffed, right? You're going to cuff you. Um, you know, you you got to stop fucking up, dude. You're you're out of your mind. Stop doing this shit. But men do that and correct each other, whereas what I saw here tonight was just sisterhood stuff, right? Which is just kind of shifting and saying, yeah, you know, girl, you didn't, yeah, it's okay. You know, there's all sorts of men who are like that. You do you. You're in a dark place. It's okay. It's always kind of the shift. And that's why I'm not so willing to kind of um, move into the, yeah, this guy's a fucking idiot and he kind of, you know, had it coming or this. I'm not really willing to give them that because I don't see the, the women kind of pushing on their end for the responsibility taking aspect. And it's like, if they're not going to do that, I don't know why we have to be so damn charitable to them. Oh, I, I don't think I was being charitable. <laughs> I don't think I was being charitable. No, 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 not you. I'm not oh, saying okay. you. I'm, I'm okay. just saying that um, this is this is why I take kind of uh, issue with the the idea of the sisterhood is because um, it seems that men are trying to correct, and I just see kind of excuse making on the mm. uh, on the women's side most often on these sure. podcasts. I'm sure. And Andrew, by the way, I know. So one of the things that. Uh, I'll often bring up that comes up frequently is though like the whole waiting for sex thing and like this scenario right here is actually like precisely why it irks me so much where there's like one standard there's yeah. a standard oh I want to wait three months I want to wait until marriage and then like either concurrently or immediately after they'll immediately just have sex with God like super quickly that's well i think i think the thing that irks you so much about it is what what's what the it's the idea of the faux virtue so the idea is um i didn't do this with this guy because i wanted to be virtuous right but i but then i just did it right away with the next guy <laughs> and so it's like well it doesn't seem like you're very consistent then with your virtuosity right and so of course from the guy's perspective he's going to feel like that's pretty horrible that you led me on for two years and kind of thought that I was uh, lesser than the guy that you were willing to hook up with within the first night or a week or whatever. I've always understood that argument. I always thought that it was a very compelling one. Um, whether or not I spiritually agree with it, it's still a very compelling argument. What do you think about this one, Andrew? So maybe I'll, we'll get back to the relationship status here in just a moment. <laughs> but ladies, how would you feel? So you've been dating a guy for two years and this is the guy you want to get married to. You want to marry him. You really like him. And he's like, oh, I, I need longer. We've only been dating for two years. I, I really need longer before I'm ready for that sort of commitment. Inevitably, you guys end up breaking up. Three months after the breakup, he immediately starts dating a new girl. They've only been dating for two months. He proposed to her after two months. How would you feel about that? You're just not the person for him. Right, but he, so he was saying the whole time, there's, and he was saying, like, I, I should have made this clear. He's been saying the whole time, there's no way I could ever, f like, be ready to marry a girl without knowing her for, like, three years. And he says that. I would never consider marrying a girl unless I dated her for three years and we lived together, did all this stuff, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that happens all the time. I would just consider I was just the placeholder mm -hmm. girl. I wasn't, I mean, I'm not going to be happy about it, but it okay. is what it is. And the, hmm, perhaps the better framing would be, mm, actually. The, also, like, you know, maybe yeah, she offered something I, you know, he didn't see in uh, me in those three months. Right. I would feel like she has something that I didn't have to give to him. Mm -hmm. And so, and plus I would try to, like, feel like I took somewhat responsibility for him wife um, wanting to marry someone 
because I trained him to be who he is today. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be like, that's but it would, me. It, I mean, it would make you feel pretty bad, right? Yes. No, it would yeah. not feel oh, good. Oh, yeah, definitely. Our ego yeah. would be hurt. Yeah. Yeah, so that's why that's why that scene and why uh, guys like Brian see that as a red flag. So there's, there's kind of the two ways to look at this. The one way to look at it is... Well, wait a second. If you want a woman with a low body count, then you probably shouldn't be sleeping with women because you add to their body count, right? This makes sense. It's coherent. It's logical. But on the other hand, how would it how would it make you feel to know that you were trying to do everything in the most virtuous way possible, and you were dating a woman, and she said, "Listen, I uh, I want to abstain due to virtue as well." and wait until marriage. And then you guys broke up maybe, let's say, after nine months, and then she slept with the next guy on the very first date. Wouldn't that make you feel like total shit? I mean, from the man's perspective, wouldn't it make him just feel like just shit? Like they did everything right, right? And they got screwed over for doing everything correctly. I would feel like it was meant to be then because then it wasn't a match. Yeah. People are removed from your life for a reason, and I would just be thankful that that happened. We, yeah, we, I'm, not, I'm not even making the dispute that, that's not, that that couldn't be true, right? All I'm asking is, wouldn't it make you feel like shit? Of course. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, but if and I that's, was a man, and that's why, why, that's like, why it's seen as a red flag is like, why would I want to make all of this investment in a woman who then comes to me and says, I want to have a virtuous relationship with you, so I'm abstaining. And then I found out in her last relationship, she slept with him the first night. As a man, <laughs> right? why are you going into, like, women's past relationships like that, though? I feel like if you're dating someone, like, the passionate matter. Well, <laughs> we'll get oh, it, here. It, it shouldn't. So let me ask you a question, just a quick question. If a man has a history of domestic violence, does his past matter? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then. Is there anything else you wanted to add to that? <laughs> but I'm saying, like, I wouldn't go digging into his, like, ex-relationships, like, oh, when uh, no, did you, you do this or you, that you, Wait, wait, girlfriend. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If, you, if you were told by a friend of yours, if you were told by a friend of yours that a man you were dating had a history of, of domestic violence, you wouldn't go digging? Really? I actually got told a lot about my current boyfriend. Like, people came up to me and were telling me things about him when we went out. And from seeing his character, like, I knew that that was just bullshit. Okay, you didn't go poking around, though? I didn't need to, because I didn't care about what was happening previously. What if you were told that he had a history of uh, kid diddling? Would you go poking around then, since you have a daughter at home? Of what? Kid diddling. If he... If if you... If he... You were told he had a history... I would use my discernment on that. Like, how... What do you mean you'd use your discernment? If you were told... You have a daughter at home. If you were told exactly, that somebody had a history. Exactly, and I would history, use my discernment on how he acts. If someone's eager to obviously meet my daughter, like, oh, yeah, like, bring me around your kid, then that's weird. I use my discernment on, that's well, why he's do, the first wait, person well, that ever met my daughter. You, do you think that they're just going to announce themselves and all their creepy vibes are just going to come no, out at once? but no. I feel like you can tell when men are, like, you know, like, oh, why don't you bring me? Like, I had, I've dated people that wanted to meet my daughter, like, very early on. I was like, that's weird. Like, why do you want to hang out with the five-year-old? Okay, well, let me just ask this very simply, then. Would you allow somebody who had ever diddled a kid around your daughter? Obviously not. Well, then I guess their history matters, doesn't it? Well, I think 